Well, you really might need to build some mass on your physique and you don't have a lot of tools to do it. One of the biggest challenges that people will face when trying to put on a lot of muscle is not necessarily they can't train enough, but it's more so that they can't eat enough. And there's been a myriad of ways to circumvent this issue with all sorts of mass gaining products out on the market. Honestly, a lot of slot products on the market to just gain mass. I've actually been sent a video in particular, and I think it's really important because this is a mass building shake. It, it's something that a lot of people would look at as an opportunity for them to build muscle. Now, speaking from a background of having a degree in science and nutrition and someone who really cares about intricate nutrition and how to really optimize someone's health, I thought I would review this video and break down whether this mass gaining shake was actually going to gain you any mass. And if it did gain you mass, hopefully it would proportionately gain you muscle mass. Let's check it out. All right, so this video is by Bully Juice. It was produced four years ago, but to this day, I still get sent this What's video What's going on YouTube? Asking, it's Bully Juice here. And in this video, this, I'm getting ready to show you guys how to make a weight gaining protein shake. That's uncomfortable. Anyway, I have a few items behind me. We're going to go over all, all of right. these things. So, literally, I can already tell this is going to be devoid of any like good protein really soon. But first I want to explain something. Do not comment and tell me that my nipples are showing. I'm aware of that. All right. I just wanted to go ahead and put that out there. Cause I know, I know you was thinking it. I know you was thinking it. This right here is actually a cup and we're going to be <laughs> no, shit, dude. putting a oh, lot of things damn. in there. We're going to put in half of a cup. Now this is going to be one of those weight gain and protein shakes. That's more on the healthier side of things. It's going to help you put on that mass. Obviously, if you want to gain weight, you have to be in a caloric excess. You have to have more calories you're intaking each day than what you are burning. If you want to lose weight, you want to have a caloric deficit. Gaining, surplus. Deficit, losing. That's how it works. It's hard to that's true. I will say though, uh, with the oats that he's putting in there, you do have to be a little bit careful. And I don't mean to be like food mongering, like the, the people who talk about food being this like really awful thing. It's not horrible, right? The phytic acid content is much higher in uncooked oats. And actually, if you let them soak and or just cook them, it reduces the phytic acid content quite a bit. Now, why is that important? Because these phytic acids chelate the minerals that we consume like calcium and magnesium and create an inert mineral. And so our body doesn't actually absorb them. So maybe you're eating your oats like me with Greek yogurt or something. And if they're not cooked, nor are they soaked, they will basically reduce the nutrient content of that Greek yogurt. The calcium will be essentially reduced. We don't want that. It's hard to eat a lot of food all day. You feel like you're stuffing yourself. I can't really get into calories. It's easier to just drink some type of smoothie and get it all down and get it over with. That's what this is about to help you accomplish. After I would argue that if you're not able to eat your meals, moving to a smoothie is not the best approach. It's probably looking at what you're eating and making it more enjoyable and also adding variety to your meals. One of the big things that I like to do with clients is like have them eat fruit juices with their meals like orange juice or pomegranate juice before their meal then including dates after their meal or having honey on their rice which kind of sounds gross when you have like rice and steak but it's actually really good something like this can contribute much more to higher volumes of food but not reduce the total net nutrient quality of that food after that i'm gonna go ahead and put these chocolate chips in these things right here going to one it's going to change the game as far as making the shake taste a little bit better it's going to change the game we're going to put in two tablespoons right there now also we're going to throw in some organic bananas they don't have to be organic that's just what i picked up at the store so this is what we're going to use one there's actually a good study done that showed organic versus non-organic foods have very little change in nutrient content. Interestingly, I don't know if there's any true importance behind that, but that you might find interesting. The other thing I'll say is that the chocolate chips, like sure, I'm still lacking where we're getting any protein from in this particular shake. One entire banana. You don't have to cut it up if you want to. You can literally just break off pieces, put the entire thing in there. I love bananas. That's going to be the only fruit we use in this smoothie. Sometimes I actually add some blueberries, maybe some strawberries, definitely blueberries quite often because I know what they do on my body. Next up is going to be baby spinach. As always, I like to go ahead and grab a couple handfuls of it. 
so it's probably gonna be enough. And spinach has a lot of great things that it offers you. One being it helps with absorption of all this stuff that you're about to be consuming, so. I'm gonna put spinach in there. What the hell is that? Uh, here's the tricky thing about spinach, more specifically raw spinach. And again, I'm not a carnivore guy, like not trying to be GOTUS 2.0, but raw spinach does have oxycholic acids or oxalates in it, which are these molecules that will once again chelate minerals and inhibit their absorption. Also, what it will do is create possible kidney damage and dysfunction long term. That's definitely not something we want to achieve, especially if you're trying to be a bodybuilder or someone with a lot of muscle. No good. And I would then also postulate here that if you're trying to make a mask inner shake, the quality of the foods and the density of the foods really matters. Spinach per gram is very void of much micronutrients at all when compared to something more dense in micronutrients like liver or steak or even a freaking Atlantic caught salmon, which is one of my favorite micronutrient dense foods to eat for most people. And especially when you're only putting a handful in, you're getting like a couple grams of fiber at best. Now, one thing I like to do is go ahead and rinse off the spinach before I actually throw it in the cup with everything else. And once I'm done, it's, it's easy from there. Cut it up a little bit with my fingers or tear it up. And if you notice, I'm putting in all the dry things first. That is what I like to do before I start adding all the things that's actually going to be moist, I guess. Next up for me is going to be some peanut butter, right? And I say for me because there's of course going to be actually peanut another butter. option. Look, peanut butter is great. It tastes good. But that's about as far as it goes. The protein content is consisted of incomplete proteins. You have tons of hydrogenated oils within the peanut butter. It as it's one of the only products on shelves that still has trans fats in it, which you should hopefully realize by now was completely banned in the United States. But somehow peanut butter gets away with using them as it's a natural byproduct of its creation. Also, it has a ton of aflatoxins. And I know I'm spewing out plant compounds like a fucking carnivore maniac, but I'm not sure trying to, I'm just being very honest, aflatoxins cause a lot of GI distress in many different people. And one of the other things that it will do very well is inhibits your immune response to particular things. And what you'll find is that when you eat large amounts of peanut butter, you will have like an inflamed throat. You will have a sniffy nose. You will have certain signs that there's an immune response from the things you're eating. Now, most people don't correlate it to the peanut butter because it seems innocuous. It seems safe, but there is a lot of concerns to eating large amounts of peanut butter. I'm not saying it's going to kill you. I'm not saying it's the worst thing in the world, but it's definitely not good. If I was to make a mass canning shake, I would be putting something in like mixed nut butter, which you can get from Nutsu, which is a brand here in the United States where it has 10 nuts and no peanuts, right? So it has, and how many times can I say nuts? Brazil nuts, it has cashew nuts, it has almonds, it has pumpkin seeds, it has chia seeds, things that are much more nutritious per gram, as well as much more advantageous for long-term health potentiation than just normal peanut butter. And that you could utilize it if you'd like to, and that's going to be peanut butter powder. Now there's a lot of differences between the two, and it's gonna depend on what you're trying to achieve. You got peanut butter powder, you got actual peanut butter. The purpose of this is actually going to be high calorie shape. So the peanut butter actually have more calorie, a little bit more fat than the powdered peanut butter. So that's what we're gonna go with. This right here has a serving size, two teaspoons, 60 calories. Whereas this serving size, two teaspoons is actually 190 calories. And that's what we're looking for, a caloric surplus. So I'm gonna actually take Two, I said teaspoons earlier, I meant tablespoons. You get, you get the point. I'm gonna take two of these, there you go. That's good enough. Throw that in there. And we're gonna do that again. We're gonna throw that in there. There we go. Like the most now, again, you wanna dumb it down just a little bit, <laughs> use the powder. Possible. Depends on what you're trying to do. Next up is going to be some honey. I'm gonna use this Mountain Ridge 100% raw organic honey. It, smell, it's, it smells amazing. So nothing what I like honey. to do is nothing at all. Actually, honey is very, very good for a carbohydrate source. And again, like I said, one thing I like to do is mix basically starchy carbohydrates, rice, 
this potatoes, things like that with honeys because they kind of digest down two different pathways, not digest, but metabolize down two different pathways. So you have the fructose kinase pathway, and then you have just the normal actual glycogen production process, which I'm totally spacing on the technical term for it, but glucose being absorbed into you know, the small intestine going into your blood and then furthermore into glycogen. Fructose is a little bit different. And if you split those two pathways, you actually see a 44% improvement within glycogen synthesis. So it's really advantageous if you're trying to build muscle. But my problem here is we've stacked carbohydrates with more carbohydrates with more carbohydrates with some fats not really any quantifiable nutrients or protein or anything that's going to contribute to actual muscle protein synthesis long term is i just kind of hold this over there and i pour in scoop like that and this dude is so and messy. then i pour <laughs> in just like one more you honey is just, awesome he went to the grocery store got all this stuff for this video looked it up on probably some Pinterest site or something to make this video and was like, all right, we got to make this in the front of the camera today, open up all these new things. And then just like never done this before made a total mess because if you had done this, let's just say daily or even every other day or something like that, the your, your cleanliness with making this shake would be so much more. You wouldn't be getting peanut butter all over your hands and dripping honey down the side of the jar. And I don't know, tearing the spinach with your hands. You'd be probably much more oriented here. Actually, it's an awesome pre-workout replacement. So if you use something natural pre -workout like honey, this, is good anyway next up or last up shall i say is actually come on it's actually going to be some milk this is what's going to okay. keep everything wet and blended really well now you have a couple different options here if you like to you could add something like this right okay this so none of these are very equivalent right almond milk is not a source of protein so i would say it's probably not a good choice i would say if you're including some form of protein within your shake egg whites something similar then almond milk could be a really great substitute to add as just a form of consistency i would say that the the milk where it is a high protein milk which is not even really that high of protein but that would probably be much better because you're actually getting complete amino acids you're then also getting a really good source of calcium and then subsequently you're again meeting that kind of minimum threshold that that leucine threshold to actually trigger muscle protein synthesis which is around 30 grams of protein per ingested meal an example some type of protein drink core power doesn't have a whole lot of protein but it has a decent amount of calories 120 24 grams of protein. Now ensure you're leveling up just a little bit. You got 160 calories, 16 grams of protein, 20 grams of fat. I usually like to go with the almond milk just because it tastes better to me. But in this video, we're talking about a mass gainer, right? Automatically, one cup of this almond milk is only 30 calories, right? Whereas one cup of this high protein organic milk 180 calories so obviously this is what we're going to go with last but not least we're going to put this milk in i'm going to use this measuring cup so that i can accurately just a heads up to anybody watching highly recommend a food scale much more easy to manage and doesn't create so much workload in terms of having to use measuring cups and spoons and all this other bullshit it can take a meal from taking you know two plates three cups and eight spoons to make to literally just a spoon in a bowl it's way more sensible in this kind of approach capture how much we're actually utilizing okay look at that mm. i love how it said one cup and he very clearly put two he put two cups in the fucking thing. Yum, yum, yummy. Don't you see it bubbling up down there? It just looks like it's gonna blend together really awesome. I'm gonna add a half a cup just because I already know once that oatmeal and the spinach and the peanut butter start blending up, it's gonna need a little bit more moisture in there to go ahead and make everything blend together really smooth. And then that's it, right? Well, we actually have one more thing. It's optional for you all, but it's something that I'm actually going to use. Normal whey protein. Ah, this is going to there boost we go. Up. Okay, so that's what we're looking for this whole time. A protein source. I would have started with that as that's probably the most critical point of conversion for everyone to focus on when they're trying to gain mass not the fucking <laughs> spinach dude not the spinach this is where it's at now arguably gold standard is a very poor quality of protein it's made with mostly 
protein, uh, whey protein concentrate, which is a very cheap and utterly awful form of whey protein. It's not necessarily bad. It will still get the job done. But for most people, it will cause digestive issues because it is a cheap form of whey protein. When you could get something like isolated whey protein, or you could get hydrolyzed whey protein, which would be probably much more advantageous, especially if you struggle to digest things like whey proteins. The calories and also the amount of protein in it. Just one scoop, one scoop in your good to go and since i actually added the protein now we're going to add the no other way. half of this cup <laughs> of milk we're going to make it two cups he's just all literally at this point designing it as he goes i guarantee it like this is not thought out together easy peasy everything's going to blend together really nicely are you ready for this because i'm ready for this i love this little bullet by the way i use this thing for almost everything it's so simple you sit it right there you pause, you give it a couple little glances, right? Then you press it down and it goes. Here's one of my biggest problems with recipes like these and things like Kodiak cakes at the store, like protein pancakes, is that they count proteins, but they're not all whole proteins. So you have to remember when you combine a recipe, you're including partial proteins with whole proteins. Now there is some science to suggest that when you include partial proteins with whole proteins, like rice and beans, for example, it completes the string of proteins and you generally will get the same effect. However, I have personally seen, at least in my client base, that that's not necessarily true. It's not necessarily advantageous to the best results. So I try to get all of the protein from whole protein sources, or at least a good 75% of it from the day from whole protein sources. Here, a good majority of the protein in this shake is from incomplete sources, or at least partially from incomplete sources, right? At least we have the milk and the whey protein. Oh man, off the hook. There you have it. So a lot of you guys have been asking me about different ways to add more calories and gain weight. Here you go. You okay, real talk. At the end of the day with this, I think that there's a lot of good stuff he's saying for sure right? Like, I don't want to besmirch what he said, because this is, there's some factual data there. I do think that realistically, though, if you're trying to build muscle, the best way to do it is to eat whole foods. And if you can't eat whole foods, you need to sort of train yourself to do so. And also think about different ways to create meals. A lot of people, real talk, just don't know how to cook. They just don't have the skill to cook food. And so yeah, their food gets really bland because they keep eating the same thing every day. But if you diversify your cooking skills, and even just cook the same thing in a different method, they'll find that you get a lot more bang for your buck with the foods that you already might enjoy and again would be highly highly nutritious compared to the slop that we just saw in a perfect world you eat whole foods that give you complete micronutrients and those will likely stimulate further hunger and growth not just fill yourself with calories that are void of much nutrients and contribute to virtually just calorie stacking which instead of building a lot of muscle is likely going to contribute to a lot of fat gain long term we don't just want to stuff a person with calories we want to make sure they're nutrient like they're nourished. The biggest problem with the United States right now is that people are overfed, but undernourished. They're eating too much calories, but not enough nutrients. And so we want to be the difference here and eat plenty of nutrients and restrict the massive amount of calories as that just distends your gut. It makes digestion horrible and it never gets through the results that you would hope for. You just end up getting a little bit more chubby and water retentive and nothing good comes from it. That's my two cents. Take it as you will. If you like this video, subscribe down below. It helps me so much. I mean, so much, you guys, seriously. And I do thank you if you've already subscribed. You mean the world to me. If you would like to keep consuming my content, it is very good. So you should consume it. Consume. Consume.